So guys, you've asked the questions, and now I'm going to answer them. Nin explains, 100k subscribers, answers to your Q&A. Alright, well firstly, thank you very much for all the positive responses. It's really reassuring to know that you guys think so highly of my work. And I got a lot of questions, so unfortunately I can't answer them all right now, but I'll try and answer them as best I can. Could you do a brief background of yourself, where you're from, your upbringing, how you got into YouTube, etc. Contrary to what people think, I'm actually not Vietnamese and I'm not Chinese. I'm actually born here in Preston, Lancashire, here in England. Um, my parents are Chinese, but they lived on the border between China and Vietnam. And when the war broke out, they decided to flee for their lives and end up here in England, where I was born. So, hence why I have a Vietnamese spelling of my name, I'm technically Chinese, and I'm technically a Brit as well. So, yeah, mixture of all three. What got you into doing YouTube? I only started doing YouTube merely to learn video editing. I had no idea that I was actually going to create my own channel and carry on doing sports related videos for the next six years but uh yeah congrats on 100k thank you very much what inspired you to make videos explaining sport rules purely for the simple fact that there wasn't any when i started on youtube there really wasn't any decent videos explaining how sports were played so i decided yeah might as well be me and it's really surprising because a lot of schools around the world now use my videos to explain how to play sports to kids which i think is great where do you learn all the rules from the sports you explain? I watch an inordinate amount of sports, so most of the time I actually do know the rules, but sometimes, like for example the Gaelic sports, I had to consult the rule book. Nin, how do you come up with the ideas for your videos because they all seem so random and so different? Most of the time they're just random thoughts in my head that I uh, choose to make videos out of. Cheers Ninny! Did you just call me Ninny? But I just want to say, how long does it take you to do explain videos on something? More than you think. Um, unfortunately, it takes a long time from researching the sport to writing the script in a very easy to understand format, to editing, to on-screen graphics, to encoding, to uploading, to doing all the social media stuff. It can be up to 11, 12, 13 hours just for a five minute video. And unfortunately, I'm seriously not joking about that. From the owner of Peltball, congrats, and thanks for helping me out with the voiceover on how to play rules. Guys, let me introduce you to my brother D'Angelo, who has created his own sport, Peltball, that will be sweeping the nation pretty shortly. I highly recommend that you actually go and check out his stuff. Ever work on a video that ended up being cancelled or scrapped? Ugh, all the time. Literally, I have a desktop full of script ideas and stuff that I wrote scripts for, did voiceovers for that I never made videos about for whatever reason. So yeah, that happens quite a lot. What sport have you had the most fun in researching for a video? Uh... Corfball? This channel is dying. Okay. Block and delete. I didn't even remember your name. What sport has caused the most problems when trying to get footage? And have any leagues reached out to you and what for? Obviously when you're using other leagues footage, some of them are more twitchy than others. I think the people who I had the most problem with was, believe it or not, Pro Kabaddi. Yeah, they, uh, they were quite vehement in me not using any of their footage. And they even sent letters from their legal team to me, which was a little bit overblown. But on the positive side, I've had organizations from Bandy um, and another one, I can't remember off the top of my head, um, asking me to use these videos as their official explainer video. So that's actually kind of cool. Congrats, Nin. Thanks very much, brother. Guys, check out Adam's channel, Five Points Videos. I'm sure you've subscribed to him already, but if you haven't, subscribe. What happened to the craps video? Ugh, the craps video. Um, basically, YouTube, for some reason or another, decided that um, it broke some weird and wonderful rule that nobody could explain. So uh, they ended up restricting my account and deleting all of my gambling videos. So um, to this day, I still don't know what happened. And it also shows that YouTube is all powerful. They can end your career like that if they want to. Are you ever going to do guitar videos again? Yeah, believe it or not, I actually started my channel doing guitar videos, but 
Um, as the years have gone by, I've been playing less and less. I can still play, but not as well as I'd like. Congrats! Out of all the Rules Explained videos, what sport has been the hardest rules for you to understand? Without a doubt, it was Pesa Palo, and there's a story behind that one. Tony Jones, the president of the Baseball Softball Federation in Finland, actually reached out to me to see if I would actually do a video about Pesa Palo. And initially I said, you know, not my bag, thank you very much. But after a couple of months I thought, you know what, yeah, let, let, let's do it, let's do it. So I started watching Pesa Palo, and I was like, what the hell is going on here? I have no idea what's going on. And it took me many, many, many hours of watching it to kind of figure out what the rules were. Because the rule books are all in Finnish, they're not in English. And I, I had to basically just piece it together from what I've watched. I actually sent it to Tony, who sent it to his colleagues at the Pesapalo Federation in Finland. They did some corrections, I made the video, and yeah, that is how I managed to explain Pesapalo to the world. Because there is no other English language um, rule books or guides out there. Mine's the only one, so kind of proud about that. Nin, what was your favourite video you have ever made? Ooh, good question. Um, probably the recent one about the code, fighting in ice hockey. What stadiums are you planning to visit when the coronavirus is over for Ultimate Bucket List? Also, love videos on both channels. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Um, I would probably do all the domestic ones here first. So all the clubs in London, all the clubs in Edinburgh, um, possibly Birmingham. Um, and in terms of the stadiums around the world, I'll just... Wherever I'm at, I'll see if there's a stadium and I'll see if I can do a tour for you guys. Not really a question, but I noticed you're left-handed. Congrats on 100k. Thanks very much, John, and believe it or not, I'm actually ambidextrous. I can actually write English with both hands, but I prefer it with my left. I can write Chinese with both hands, but I prefer it with my right. Uh, that's mainly because they actually make you write with your right hand. I throw left, but I bat right. I can use both hands quite comfortably. Being from Preston, do you support the local American football team? I must admit, quite a few of the Lancashire Wolverines players actually train in my gym, but I'd be lying if I said I had any inkling to support them or watch any of their games. Congrats, man. Thanks. I don't know if this has been asked before, but I was just wondering, what's your background in sports? Like, you look athletic, but what sport specifically do you most enjoy, have played, and still play? I've done literally every sport, from ballet, to figure skating, to ice hockey, to cricket, basketball, uh, rugby league, um, field hockey, and that was just before high school. After high school, I carried on with basketball and ice hockey predominantly, but as soon as I touched at university, I switched to being a martial artist, literally. Um, I did about four martial arts a week whilst I was studying at university, and that became my go-to thing. What team do you support in each sport? Oh, now you're asking. Okay, um, I'll just rattle them off. Toronto Maple Leafs, Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Rock, Toronto Argonauts, Toronto Raptors, Toronto Marlies, University of Toronto Varsity Blues, Dallas Cowboys, Texas A&M, Manchester United, Manchester Storm, Wigan Warriors, Brisbane Broncos, Essendon Bombers, Dublin GAA, AC Milan, Kölner Haier, and if there's any I've missed off the top of my head, I'll just put the logos somewhere there. What is your real name? That, that is my real name. You seem to be a big fan of Toronto sports teams. How come? Basically because most of my relatives now live in and around the Toronto areas. Wow, I did not expect you to look like that. <laughs> I actually get that a lot. Um, I people listen to my voiceover and think that I'm some posh white guy from London. Um, and they're horribly shocked to realize that I'm some Chinese dude from Lancashire instead. So yeah, a lot of people don't expect me to look like this. By the way, Jacob, thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed to his channel, subscribe there. How do you speak so proper, mate? You sound like a narrator at all times. You see, I don't think I do. Don't get me wrong, I've done voiceover work in the past. So if you do live here in the UK, and you hear a voice on the TV, the radio, or some company's answering machine that sounds a lot like me, it's probably going to be me. But in day-to-day -day speech, just like I'm talking to you now, I honestly don't think that I actually speak that well. Do you ever visit Canada? Not as much as I'd like. Why did you want to become a YouTuber? Original, I know. Honestly, Tim, I still don't consider myself to be much of a YouTuber. Um, 
If I had like a million subscribers, perhaps, but I honestly don't believe that I can call myself a YouTuber. I mean, people still don't actually take me seriously. Are you primarily a YouTuber or do you have another full-time job or business? Um, I'd love to be a full-time YouTuber, but um, unfortunately, with the level of uh, viewers and subscribers I currently get, it just doesn't pay. Question, if you would get a chance to live in any country in the world, which one would it be? If you'd asked me that 10 years ago, I would have said I'd love to live in Toronto without a shadow of a doubt. But practically wise, in terms of things like cost of living, etc., I would probably uh, live in Vegas. Either Vegas or Dallas. I was very enamored with these two places when I did my American road trip about two years ago, and I'd happily live in either city. Giant Dude asks, what's the weirdest sport you've ever heard of? <laughs> well, it's funny that your name is Giant Dude, because the weirdest sport I've heard of, and this was actually a very recent one, um, is kudu dung spitting. So you basically find the dung of a kudu, you put it in your mouth, and you see how far you spit it. So let me recap. You put poo in your mouth and you spit it as far as you can. I'm seriously not joking. This is actually a real sport in South Africa and I highly recommend that you pause the video and actually Google this right now. Seriously, I'm not making this up. Favorite country. My favorite country is Canada, but America comes in a close second. Which do you like better, rugby league or rugby union? I'm a rugby league fan. I can watch Union, but I much prefer League. What conspiracy theory do you actually believe? And do you have a favourite movie? Um, no favourite movie, but the conspiracy theory that I actually do believe, um, I thoroughly believe that Princess Diana was assassinated. What happened to her in the Paris Tunnel was no accident. I'm pretty sure somebody set her up to be killed. Nin explains. Quantum physics. <laughs> <laughs> Not my bag, dude, seriously, but uh, thank you very much for that. Which sport would you prefer to play given a choice between Botaoshi and Flickerball? Botaoshi, mainly because you can kick somebody in the face. Outside of Botaoshi, which sport that you've explained the rules of and haven't played did you most want to play? Wow, a lot of questions about Botaoshi today. Um, I think if I had to have a go at some of the sports that I've explained that I haven't played yet, probably Hyalai. Um, bull riding, and medieval MMA in that order. If you could add or remove one rule from any sport, what would it be? I actually made a full video about that dude. Hey Nin, who's your favorite NASCAR driver? Traditionally, it was Jeff Gordon. Um, in more recent years, Matt Kenseth. But nowadays, it's pretty much anybody except Kyle Busch. Hey Nin, India versus Pakistan, who will win? Believe it or not, I've got an upcoming video about that, so check that out once it comes out because it's going to be pretty epic. As a Man United fan, how do you feel about Liverpool? I honestly don't have any problem with Liverpool, the football team. Their fans, however, that's a different story. Hey Nin, congrats on 100k. Thank you very much. My question is, if you had to play for one club, what would it be, City or Liverpool? <laughs> oh boy. Everyone knows I'm a Manchester United fan, but if I had to play for one club, it would be City. Um, live very briefly on the east side of Manchester, so in theory, I actually should be a blue, not a red. Out of all the five major sports in North America, how would you rank these from least to most favourite? Um, from most favourite to least favourite, pretty much the order that you've written. Congrats, from Mexico, San Luis Potosi. Wow, Mexico? Wow, that's pretty cool. What do you think of Mexican football? I can't really say too much about it, but from what I've seen, pretty good. Congrats Nin, your main channel has provided me hours of entertainment for years and your self-help channel really helped me develop some positive habits. Thank you very much Derek. I have two questions for you. Wow, these are long questions. With all the crazy sports you've broken down over the years, what are the chances that we fans will be able to see the man, the myth, the legend himself play any of them? Um, little to none unfortunately. I'm injured to holy hell. I've got a, a slew of injuries. My keep fit regime is mainly gym based, but other than that, yeah, no sports at the moment. What, in your opinion, is the most important skill, talent, X-factor, etc., an athlete can develop, regardless of their sport? Um, unwavering self-belief. I think that things like speed, strength, etc., can be coached, but what separates from the champions from the not-champions is all in the mind. I thoroughly believe that the psychology has to come first. First question, how are you today? Yeah, I'm alright. Second question, do you believe that cereal is a soup? Controversial question, I know. 
Um, I don't think cereal is a soup, mainly for the fact that in a soup, you actually cook the ingredients in the broth. Whereas you don't actually cook cereal in milk. And if you do, you're just weird. What's your opinion on the GAA? Um, honestly, I like the Gaelic sports. My only problem with the GAA is their refusal to accept professionalism in the modern world. Um, I think it's a shame that the players aren't being paid a salary, but I understand why they don't want to pay their players, etc. Um, but yeah, that's just my two cents. Question, who do you reckon is going to win the Super Bowl? I honestly don't believe that they're actually going to play this year. What are your thoughts for like a better descriptor? Extreme sports such as snowboarding, skateboarding, BMX, etc. Extreme! Yeah, actually pretty good. St. Louis Cardinals or Chicago Cubs? Toronto Blue Jays. Would you try ski jumping on the 120 meter slope? Absolutely. How do you feel about esports? Have you ever thought about covering it? Honestly, I'm not really an esports kind of guy. Um, apart from shooting prostitutes on Grand Theft Auto 5, that's about as much gaming as I do. And, and, please give me a shout out. Well, you, you put two ands in there, so yeah. I didn't know there were Asians in Britain. What's it like? <laughs> Dude, are you serious? Do you enjoy college football? Yes, I do. Giga Maggies. I've got a question. How did you get into American football? Like most Brits, Channel 4. Did your views on Quidditch change since you made the video? <laughs> no, no, I still think it's a ridiculous sport, sorry. What are your thoughts on Major League Soccer? I actually think it's pretty good. Um, the standard has come a long way in the last 20 or so years, and give it another 10, 20 years, I think it'll be one of the best leagues in the world. Dude, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm kind of curious though, how well are you holding up during this pandemic? Apart from getting fat and getting pretty bored, not too bad. Congratulations, then. Well deserved. Thank you very much. Of all the winter sports you've seen, which would you like to try? Probably um, any of the ones that involve going down an icy track, such as bobsleigh or luge or skeleton bob. You know, one of those ones. Milan versus Inter. Who would win? As an AC Milan fan, honestly, Inter would win any day of the week at the moment. I hate to admit that, but it's true. Do you plan to ever go to another NASCAR track? I highly recommend the Bristol Night Race. Uh, yeah, probably when I go to America again and do some more traveling. Um, I've got plans to do the Richard Petty experience at either Las Vegas Motor Speedway or Daytona. Um, but if I'm driving through Alabama, like if I'm going to Talladega or something, yeah, I'll check out a race if it's on. Have you ever been to a Gaelic football or hurling match? Yes, I have. Go Dubs. Which American sport, apart from American football, has the best potential to succeed in the UK? I honestly think that American football is the sleeping giant here in the UK. But failing that, pretty much ice hockey. I think it's by far in the best shape out of the four American sports currently, and I think it has the potential to succeed here in the UK. I know I made a video bashing it recently, but it's honestly not that bad. What is your favorite sports memory? Honest to God, there's been a lot of favorite sports memories, but my absolute favorite memory actually comes from a regular baseball game. May 29th, 2005, I was in Toronto at the time. It was a gorgeous Sunday afternoon and standing on the mound at Rogers Centre was the great Roy Halladay. I thoroughly believe that Roy Halladay was the greatest pitcher of his era because I watched him absolutely mow down the Minnesota Twins like they were nothing. Apart from a soft error by Alex Rios and a really soft bunt by Nick Punto, it was literally a perfect game all day long. 10 strikeouts, complete game shutout domination. About six months later, I actually bought the jersey that Roy Halladay wore during that game. So this is Roy Halladay's actual game-worn jersey, complete with a holograph and the uh, memorial patch that wasn't available in any of the replica jerseys. Um, and this is the actual jersey he wore um, during that game. And obviously, Roy Halladay sadly passed on. RIP Roy, God rest in peace. But honestly, I'd never seen a pitcher dominate a team so much and so well like he did on that day. And this jersey, his jersey, is probably the most valuable piece of sports memorabilia I have in my collection. And I have a lot. First off, I'm very proud. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Second, my question. Have you ever considered going to notable games around the world, i.e. the Belgrade Derby, Red Star vs. Partisan, etc.? Probably for my other channel, Ultimate Bucket List, 
that's more of a travel slash sports channel um, as opposed to me explaining things. So if I do do the Belgrade Derby, it's probably going to be on my other channel. And if you haven't already subscribed to my other channel, help me out, obviously. My two part question for the Q&A. What are your plans for the future of this channel? Are you going to do the same videos as usual or will you try some different things? Different things, I'm sure you'll come across them soon enough. Are you ever going to release merch? I'd love to see a Ninling shirt. Funny you should say that. Merchandise like this? Fuck you, Spanos. Very happy that you've reached this landmark. A guru's role is to decimate information in the simplest, most effective manner. You are an awesome guru. Cheers, love and hugs from India. Thanks very much, Anthony. I wouldn't consider myself a guru, but yeah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Question, what is your next sub goal? Um, well, I suppose if I can get to a million subscribers on each of my channels, that'd be fantastic. Um, I don't expect to get Casey Neistat style numbers given the content I create, but you never know. It could be possible. You should make a vid if opening the plaque. Honestly, I would do if I have it, but unfortunately, it's not actually arrived yet, so I, uh, I haven't got anything to unbox. Featuring in here, I actually did receive the award just before I put the video out to upload. So I actually decided to hold off until the award came so that you could see what you actually received at 100k subscribers. You get this duty little letter and stuff like that, but the main prize is obviously this rather shiny metalish plaque, so that's kind of cool. I know this has been a really long video, so thank you very much for listening to me yammer for the last 20 minutes, and also thank you very much for being a subscriber. Here's hope it doesn't take another six years to reach a million subscribers.